Spine Surgical Innovation's swivel port system provides a simple and effective solution for your minimally invasive posterior spine procedures. The Minimal Incision Maximum Sight, or MIMS approach, provides the greatest visualization and access to the operating site relative to the incision size on the market. Please refer to Port Selection and Approach Guide for suggested and approximate approaches for your lumbar and cervical procedures. For this product overview, we will show how the swivel standard port is used to perform a T-lift procedure. Like all procedures, confirm the level and trajectory of approach by spinal needle and fluoroscopic imaging. Access to the spine is gained by either using dilation to create a wound channel, or making a small 15 millimeter incision in the skin and splitting the paraspinal muscle. The swivel port dilation set allows the surgeon to use the basic dilation set for creating the wound channel or using the unique track dilator to help guide the port down to the bony structures. If using a more traditional approach, make a small 15 millimeter incision in the skin and split the paraspinal muscle using a straight Penfield type dissector, moving in a windshield washer type splitting motion. When the lamina and transverse process can be palpated, open the incision to 22 millimeters in the skin and fascia. Using a 19 millimeter Cobb elevator, Sweep muscle and ligament off of the lamina and facets, preparing a bone to port interface for maximum stability. Retraction. Attach the handle to the closed swivel port base with the flanged blades pointing towards the surgeon. Slide the closed blades into the wound through the muscle splitting incision using a Cobb elevator to guide the port and to keep the incision open until the port rests on the bone. Gently retract the muscle laterally, hooking the flanged ended blade into the tissue for optimal stabilization and keeping the port firmly resting against the bone. Confirm the position with fluoroscopic imaging. Attach the rotating ring and open the swivel port base by turning the ring clockwise. Remove the rotating ring and insert the closed expander blades into the port with rostral caudal orientation, opening the blades as needed with the wrench or screwdriver. Caution should be taken not to overextend the blades. If a bony structure causes resistance, a slight adjustment to the blade angle or a different blade length may be needed. The flex arm can now be used for additional stability. The handle can be moved away from the surgeon, pointing medially perpendicular to the spine. Reposition the swivel port intraoperatively by loosening the flex arm and adjusting the placement of the port as needed. Fusion. When performing an interbody fusion, a discectomy is performed and an interbody device is implanted into the prepared disc space through the port using standard instrumentation. The expander blades can be opened and adjusted to increase visibility and access to the pedicles for screw insertion. With the screws inserted, the rod can then be placed into the screw heads using the pivot-tipped rod forceps. Insert the set screws. Use the anti-torque device and associated hex screwdriver to tighten the caudal set screw maximally. Insert the MIS compressor through the port to compress the disc space. Conversely, the MIS distractor can be used to open the disc space. Once compressed, tighten the rostral set screw using the hex screwdriver. Remove the compressor and insert the anti-torque device and hex screwdriver together 
to complete tightening of the proximal set screw. Removal With the fusion complete, close the expander blades by first loosening the screws. Then remove the expanding blades. Reattach the rotating ring and turn the ring counterclockwise to close the swivel port base. Remove the swivel port base from the wound and close the tissue layers in a standard manner. Conclusion The swivel port family of MIS products provides a simple, safe, and comprehensive system that complements your surgical technique.